Yo, my name is Benjamin, and in this video, I'm excited to introduce masking, a new feature we're adding to the April update. Let's dive right into it. Here we have an image, and I'd like some parts of this image to be faded out gradually. Sometimes you can use gradients for this, but that won't work with themes or different backgrounds in general. To add a mask, I can head over to the styles property here and select mask. This will default to an alpha mask using gradients, where you can use any of our gradient tools to define custom masks. I can also edit these masks directly on the canvas. We can rotate it to change the angle and we can edit and add new gradient stops. And for each gradient stop, you can control the alpha value. When set to zero, that part of your content will be completely invisible. And when set to 100, that part will be completely visible. So I'll bring in this stop as well. And then I'll add two more. And for these inner ones, I'd like to set alpha to 100%. And for the outer ones, 0%. And now we can tweak the positioning of each stop to correctly mask just the parts I would like to mask of this image. So you get complete control over your mask. And best of all, we're still dealing with a single layer. Once done, you can edit this layer as you normally would. And we're using an image here, but it could even be a video or a component as well. Those are the very basics of alpha masking in Framer. And you can use this for more creative use cases, like recreating a progressive blur effect, which here I did by stacking multiple layers with an increasing background blur and each layer revealing a different part of the gradient. So if we open one of these, you can see they're just alpha masks, like the ones we looked at before. And by combining features like these, you can create pretty cool, customizable setups. Here, I connected each of these blurs to a visibility variable, so we can toggle the before and after on the instance. Next, let's have a look at image masking. Instead of just using gradients, you can also upload your own images to be used as masks. For example, you can upload your own SVGs and use them to mask any layer in Framer. And you can also customize the sizing and positioning of your uploaded image. Here, I just added a few variants, each with their own SVG mask, and then cycled between each variant. While using SVGs with alpha masking is probably most common, we also added some more modern properties like luminance masking, where you can upload other PNGs or even GIFs to use as the mask of any layer in Framer. So here I uploaded this animated GIF and set mode to luminance which looks at the relative luminance values of your uploaded image. In this case, all the light parts are visible and the dark parts are hidden. At the time of recording, animated GIFs don't work well as masks in Safari, so please use this with caution. Next, let's have a look at radial gradient masking to solve a common UI pattern. This is a stack of images, and we would like to separate these images using a sort of border without using real borders, as that wouldn't work on any given background. So I'll add a mask, set it to radial, move this color stop to the right, move the gradient to the center, and by holding shift, scale it up just a little bit. I'll snap it to 0.54. Then I'll copy this mask and paste it onto the next image. And just like that, we have a stack of user images that work well 
on any given background. We also added support for stacking multiple masks on top of one another. So here I have two masks and it's just a simple SVG circle. This one is positioned at the bottom center and this one at the top center. By default, these are additive. So these two circles get combined into a new shape. When you stack multiple masks, we allow you to control a property called composite with four options, add, subtract, intersect, and exclude. And this influences how this mask renders in relation to the mask layer below it. So you can create all sorts of unique effects. If you've ever used a design tool to edit multiple shapes, this is essentially the same as Boolean operations, but then for masks. And you can even sort your masks to quickly iterate between different setups. This property only works when there is a mask directly below it, but you can still freely sort and will remember the value you defined even for the last mask. Unlike Boolean operations when editing vector shapes, these masks can be applied to responsive elements, unlocking all sorts of creative and unique setups. So next, Let's have a look at a more realistic example of how you can incorporate multiple masks in a responsive setting. Here I've made a simple responsive ticket by stacking multiple masks and using the composite property. On the right here we have two SVG image masks with the topmost one set to intersect and we've also added a little border radius and on the left here we're mixing two image masks as well, but I've added a gradient mask in between to make sure you can resize freely without ever seeing the edges of the image masks. Next, I'd like to point out that these new properties also work within component variants, allowing for some pretty fun new interactions. Like this setup where creating a mask that is taller than the actual avatar allows you to create playful clipping effects. And last but not least, the new masking property also works on components like the ticker component that here I've connected to two images of generated noise and we also support tiling for any image mask, allowing you to design patterns and background images using masks as well. And just like normal patterns in Framer, we can customize the scale. I'll go for 75%. And if we then go back and give this a preview, you can see we've created this animated dot grid effect using only a single ticker component. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay tuned for more updates coming soon.